when you run services or events, you really need to think about who will be carrying out the tasks involved in doing this. This is especially true if you are running regular services. If you can get the necessary funding, employing your own staff can really help your organisation to achieve its aims, but there is a lot to consider in doing this properly. It also requires your group to operate as an effective employer with the right structures, policies and support practices in place. As an organisation, if you're employing staff, then you'll need to make sure that you're meeting all of your legal obligations under employment law. Now let's consider responsibilities when employing staff. You're going to have to think about whether your structures for governance are suitable for employing staff. More information is available about this in Module 2. You will need job descriptions defining what they will do, which will be necessary for recruitment and ongoing management. You will need open and fair and effective recruitment processes and staff induction arrangements. You will need to carry out employment checks and take up references to make sure that applicants are suitable for the work you do with vulnerable people. You will need to ensure that staff have a legal contract of employment, which will cover a number of things like working hours and holidays, pension arrangements, health and safety and insurance arrangements. And you will need good quality staff records and arrangements to pay the staff. Ultimately, there are a lot of employment laws that you have to comply with as an employer, and more information can be found about this at SCVO's site, which is listed in our fact sheet. To get the most from your staff and to make sure that they're properly supported, you will need to help to do things like develop a work plan setting out what you expect of them and when it needs to be done by. It's important to have someone in your committee who they will link with for guidance and accountability. This is known as a line manager. It's important to agree regular support and supervision meetings, usually between the committee and the manager, and also to support the manager to do the same thing with their own staff. This is about checking in with how they're all getting on with the work you have asked them to do and whether they require any support. You will also need to think about whether it's necessary for staff to have any relevant training and try to make arrangements to provide this. You should always remember to include the cost for training in the budget. It's likely that your organisation will make use of volunteers and for this you will need a volunteering policy and procedures. This includes how you recruit volunteers and take up references and check with Disclosure Scotland if this is required. It will involve providing clear volunteer roles about what you want volunteers to do and arranging for regular support and supervision in a similar way to what you would do with staff. Volunteers may require training and support and it's important that you make arrangements to provide this. And also to recognise volunteers for their time and hard work that they're putting in on your behalf without being paid. So it's very important to ensure that they are not out of pocket and that you pay volunteer expenses for things like travel, childcare or food 